What's up, everybody? Welcome to Move the Sticks. DJ Bucky here, and we are continuing on our division preview series, Bucky. And today, maybe the most visible division in the National Football League, the NFC East. Yeah, the NFC East, and what we're going to do, we're going to use our joint scouting rankings index where we take six categories, lower score wins, and then we determine which team should be the powerhouse of that division. All right, let's not waste any time. Let's roll right into this, and we'll start on offense at the quarterback position. Again, we rank these guys four all the way up to number one. The Eagles come in at number four. The Redskins at three with Kirk Cousins. Number two ended up being the Giants there with Eli Manning. And number one, because of Dak – no, sorry, Tony but, Romo. But, yeah, that preseason no. Hall of Famer, Dak Prescott, raises the bar <laughs> for the Dallas Cowboys. That's why they should be number one, Tony I, Romo, I, Dak Prescott. I was really leaning towards Romo there, but uh, <laughs> I like Dak Prescott. But, again, Cowboys number one there at the quarterback position. Yeah, when you look at the Cowboys and the way that Tony Romo has been so consistent, he's been a model of consistency as a starter. Now, the thing that has hurt him in recent years – not being available. The injuries have kind of piled up. But when he's healthy, their offense is as good as anybody. And the last time we saw him healthy, he led the league in completion percentage and also in passer rating. He deserves to be in the top of this. I'll tell you what, based off some things we saw last year, Kirk Cousins kind of nudging up on that he number two there. spot Absolutely. here too. Uh, could be in the mix. All right, let's move on here to the skill positions. Look at what they have, the weapons around them, Bucky, and let's work four to one. The Philadelphia Eagles, the Washington Redskins, the New York Giants with Odell Beckham Jr., but still, the Dallas Cowboys are the number one team. What about what about that one, though, at the top? Because that was a tough one for us there. When you look at the Cowboys with Jason Witten, still a solid player. You've got Dez, some other players there. And we look at what they have in the backfield now. That was a close call. It was a close call, but I do think what you alluded to, I think they have more balance, more depth at multiple positions, running back positions. Ezekiel Elliott, Alfred Morris is a guy that has been a 1,000-yard rush in the league. The weapons on the outside, Jason Witten, Dez Bryant, I think that just gives them the nod. Because when you look at the New York Giants, you have Odell Beckham Jr., you have some other nice pieces. Sterling Shepard's been kind of the preseason hype bunny. But at running back, I think the running back position is decidedly in favor of the Cowboys. That's why they're number one. Tell you what, that tight end for Washington might might be reason to move up a little absolutely. bit. Absolutely. And I think, you know, you could make that argument about the – perimeter players of the Washington Redskins. The only thing they're missing, that running back, it keeps them from the Dallas Cowboys as well. All right, offensive line here, Bucky. Let's work again. Number four, the Giants. Then I go the Eagles, and that, that issue with Lane Johnson is a big deal now because I think they could have one of the better offensive line if he was out there. Um, and then you go Redskins at two, and the Cowboys obviously clear-cut number one. I mean, offensively, the Dallas Cowboys have everything that you want. This is a team that has expended a number of first-round picks, three first-round picks on the offensive line. Leo Collins would have been another first round pick so you're talking about three four first round talents and I think it's reflected in their play they move bodies off the line they are solid in pass protection they deserve to be the number one team yeah, Redskins Eagles man I, I'd be tempted to just slide the Eagles right ahead the Redskins that was a tough one for us we ended up sorting it out the way we did Cowboys ended up sweeping the three categories there on the offensive side we switch over to defense though uh, not the same dominance there for the Cowboys on that side of the ball. The front seven, Bucky, how do we have them? Yeah, the Cowboys being up the rear, they're fourth. I have the Giants at third, the Redskins at second, and then the Philadelphia Eagles with the best front seven. The Eagles, look, they don't have a lot of depth at inside linebacker. Um, you know, They brought, just brought in Tulloch. I, I like that move. He's familiar with Jim Schwartz. But when you look at what they have with Fletcher Cox inside, I think Brandon Graham's going to have a big year in this scheme. Vinny Curry's a solid player. You still got Connor Barwin. They've got some other size inside of the defensive tackle position that they can rely on. So I, I think they do ha have the best front seven in this division. I don't think – any of the front sevens in this division would be considered the tops in the league. No, I don't think there is an elite front seven in this division, but I do like the potential of the Philadelphia Eagles with the guys that you talked about. Brandon Graham, uh, Vinny Curry is a guy coming on the game. Buses. Obviously, Fletcher Cox is the headliner. And then Carter Barwin is a guy that is kind of crafty in what he does off the edge. They should have a lot of success with Jim Schwartz coming at the control. All right, let's move on now to the secondary, Bucky. And we work four to one in the secondary. We had the Cowboys coming in at number four. The Eagles coming in at number three. I do like the safeties that they have. There are some concerns there on the outside at corner. The Redskins, Josh Norman and company, they come in at number two. And the Giants, surprisingly, because of some additions and some, some young players we're high on, we ended up having at number one. You know, this is a really um, debatable pick when you talk about the New York Giants and the Washington Redskins because everyone would think that Josh Norman and then Bashar Breeland being on the outside. Good player. Two talented players, but maybe a little weaker safety with D'Angelo Hall having to play free safety, not necessarily a natural fit at the position. The New York Giants have expended a lot of capital to make sure they can upgrade it. You have Janoris Jenkins coming in. You take a first-round pick in Eli Apple. He should be a guy to contribute. 
DRC. Yeah. Dominic Rodgers played a lot better than people give him credit for. He is a really good player. And I think Landon Collins would kind of find his way in his second season. And Darian Thompson's done a nice job for him, the rookie out of Boise State. Absolutely. Nice, nice yeah. traffic cop in the back end. All right. The coaching, Bucky, number four, we have the Giants. New coach, McAdoo. Don't know much about being Come there. number three, another new coach, Doug Peterson. Number two, the Redskins. How about that? Jay Gruden moved right up to the number two spot. And then number one, Hey, people like to criticize Jason Garrett for all those 500 seasons. We've seen, though, they've been able to take that next step on occasion. like to see it again this year. But he's clearly, I think, in terms of experience and what we know, the top coach in this division. A lot of experience on the job, understands exactly what he wants his team to look like. I think they've gone back to being a little more accountable in terms of holding their players to a level of accountability. But also, when you get Jason Garrett, you get Rod Marinelli. And I love what Rod Marinelli is able to do with underachievers. He's going to have that defense playing like a bunch of junkyard dogs. They're going to be a lot better than people think. All right, let's check out how this all sorted out here. Let's look at our overall offensive rankings board. The Eagles end up coming in at number four. They bring up the rear here. Then the Redskins and Giants tied there at eight. And the Cowboys, how about that? Again, remember, low score wins. It's just like golf. The Cowboys, we believe, have the most talented offense. Now we flip it over to the defense and the overall rankings. And the Cowboys uh, not necessarily holding down the top spot. As good as they are on on offense, they're as bad on defense. They come in at nine. They come in at fourth with nine. Then you have the Giants, the Eagles, and the Redskins top us off in terms of the defense. All right, let's reveal then what we have overall. And we look right there. Okay, there you have it. The Cowboys, we have talent-wise – Maybe overtaking the Redskins in this division this year. A very competitive, though. You look, not much separating these guys. The Redskins, two, Giants, three, and the Eagles uh, down there in fourth. But if I asked you right now, Bucky, I mean, would you be totally shocked if the Eagles ended up winning this division? I wouldn't be shocked if any of those teams win. And, in fact, I think the New York Giants are a team that you probably should hang your hat on in terms of what they will be able to do within the division. Eli Manning, I think that defense would be a lot better with Steve Spagnuolo having more talent at his disposal. And also the Odell Beckham Jr. factor, I think he could be a big impact player for uh, overall talent though we give the edge to the dallas cowboys but that's that's what me and bucky think let us know what you think leave your comments at the bottom of the screen on youtube all right and be sure to check out all of our division previews here on move the sticks as well as our positional preview we've got all your preseason needs covered right here on move the sticks <laughs>